meditation the rebellion meditation is rebellion this might sound strange to you but this is how it is meditation brings rebellion in life it is rebellion against all traditions conventions dogmas creeds rebellion against the whole past it is a new beginning dawn of new awakening remember unless you are completely cleansed of the past you cannot be totally here now this is the essence of initiation initiation have two steps dying to the past and then starting a new beginning a new dawn and unless you are totally here now you will not know the truth is there are two ways sufi terminology uses two words haqqul yaqeen and ilmul yaqeen haqqul yaqeen yaqeen means certitude haq means truth the experience of truth the certitude that comes by encounter truth that which is and the other is ilmul yaqeen ilm means knowledge all that is your customs traditions which has been infused into you the certitude the yaqeen that comes because of knowledge is known as ilmul yaqeen and that which comes through the experience of truth it is a direct encounter there is no one between you and truth you are standing naked in front of it and when you encounter that life is bound to change otherwise you will be like the more about who i hold the very nature of moth or rain fly is to hum around a flame and in doing so it dances and finally gets burned with the flame then it happened many years went by all the moth were dying sacrificing their life dancing near the flame then one of them got a scholarship to study in a foreign university he studied spiritual dimensions and obtained an honorable degree when he came back he studied the entire system of his ancestors and he said from now onwards none of our people will get burned you want to dance around the flame certainly i will let you dance around the flame and he hang the picture of the flame on the wall and ask all the clan the people to dance around that flame and it happened since then no moth died this is a mulaki you have to move from the past if you have to start a new structure the old structure has to be completely demolished you cannot renovate it sometimes the renovation takes costs more than starting a new structure truth is neither in the past nor in the future truth is always here now truth means that which is you cannot use the word truth was for truth or will be for truth truth is always is isness is truth our mind goes on moving from past to future like the pendulum but it does not stop anything 
It is like a pendulum moving from one extreme to another. It never stays in the middle, and the middle is the truth. From past to the future, from future to the past, we go on shuttling like a good stream. We never stay in the now, and now is the nature of existence. Existence knows only one tense, the present, the nowness. This is the way of Buddha. He gave the middle path. Buddha gave the middle path. When I look at different masters, there doesn't seem to be any difference. The experience of truth is same for everyone, but the doors are different. Existence knows only one tense, the present tense, the nowness. The greatest rebellion in life is to drop all traditions and all conventions and scriptures too. Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, the Quran, the Bible, the Gita, all these are past. Umar Khayyam says in one of his couplets, Kya ho hasil unke zikr se jo peekar mast hai? What shall you gain, O fool, by talking about those who are drunk and gone? What would you gain by talking about all those people who go for honeymoon? In order to experience honeymoon, you have to go into it yourself. No books, no stories will give you the fulfillment, that actual involvement into that will. You have to drop them all in totality. You cannot hold on to anything, anything. And when Sufis say you have to abandon three things, first is Tark. Tark means logic. The first thing that you have to, and couple, to abandon in the company of a master is logic. Logic means the past. How do you argue? on the basis of the past, that you have known the life up to now like this and you consider it the only way. So that has to be abandoned. You have read this in Bhagavad Gita or Quran or Bible. You have read it. This is immediate. It has not become your certitude. You are quoting your scriptures. Then there is always, why are you entering? You have entered into because you have many problems. Life is inf infested with problems. In order to offset those problems, you enter into spiritual realm so that you can enter the other world. Second thing you have to abandon is Tarki Upma. Tark means to abandon, Upa means the other world, the desire for the other world. And last of all, you have to abandon the Mola, the Master, because Master is an obstruction. And in the beginning, it is an asset. Master is a ladder that helps you to climb up to the roof. But when you reach the top of the house on, and you have a next step is to go on to the room, you have to abandon the ladder. If you do not, you will remain hanging and you will not reach to the top. And for this very reason, the Sikh religion, Guru Nanak, called his place by a unique name, Guru Dwara. Guru means master, door is, Dwar means door. And also Dwara means through.
to the master you attain to that region which is beyond so last of all you have to abandon the master he helps you if you want to learn to walk as a child at one time or the other you have to abandon the hand that you were holding of your mother or father to walk on your own feet in wisdom you will make mistakes but that is the only way you will learn in life that is why it needs man but a child it needs tremendous courage it needs certain integrity some growth as well and my effort my whole work here is to help you to become more mature so that you can pass through the rebellion and one day you transcend beyond the door that your master is Once you have passed through this rebellion, Christ is born in you, Buddha is born in you. They are different names for the same experience, different doors to come out in the wide open sky. But all this happens through meditation. Hence, disciplehood revolves around the idea of meditation. I just. tell you a simple and simple thing be meditative and nothing else for meditation you need no religion or scripture just you are needed meditation contains the whole philosophy of life deep within its soul and one day out of meditation thousands of flowers blossom out of it everything that is needed comes by itself meditation means awareness moment to moment awareness none of your action is guided by your consciousness and you need not search for it mind is identified with the body you feel i am the body this is the state of mind meditation is this identification with body and all that relates to the body the sense of this i have explained earlier mind is four corners intellect memory the storehouse of the memory ego sense and mind itself meditation is disidentification with the body when it starts feeling i am in the body but i am not the body many times you see traditionally unconsciously that i am sick is it right to say i am sick no my body is sick i am not identified as body my feet is hurting feet is part of me but not me body is just like a house and i am dwelling i have lived in many bodies many houses so there is no need to cling to this particular house in your life you look into you had many jobs you have lived at many places change your residence many times but are you attached to any one of these you are enjoying the present moment the grandeur the beauty the splendor of the present residence one day this house is going to collapse as all houses always collapse sooner or later but my being is eternal it cannot collapse it is not made of any collapsible material in fact it is not made of material at all being is just 
consciousness, awareness, mood, light. Consciousness is your inner space with no matter in it. That is why Buddha calls it as no self or anatta. Because when your room is filled, you see many things inside. When you take out everything, the room is empty. That emptiness occupies the room. And because of that emptiness, there comes an echo. As you move into meditation, this feeling starts becoming stronger day by day. That does not mean that you start neglecting the body. On the contrary, you start caring about the body more carefully because it is a beautiful house, a gift of God. You have to keep it clean and beautiful, young and vital, energetic and alive too. Because you have to live in it for many, many years still. Do you keep your living room or house dirty, unclean, disturbed or you keep it neat and tidy? In the same way, a meditative person is very well organized. When you look at his place, you will find everything in a proper place. There is no need to make your body ugly, poor or starved. Make it a palace, a marble palace. Make it a temple, but remember, I am not it. So when it dies, you are not dying. The body is born and the body dies. You are never born, never dies. And meditation is very simple. Just watching. Begin with watching. This is the essence of Tantra. Watching your brain. Watching your every movement. Watching every single movement as the breath comes in, slowly and slowly. First, it is outside you. It touches your nostrils. It creates a sensation. Then it begins inward journey. Slowly and slowly it begins its movement. When it reaches solar plexus, it pauses. It pauses because its upward movement has to begin. It activates that center. This is incoming breath is inhaling. Now it has to exhale. It pauses for a moment. Be aware when it pauses. Be aware when it takes a turn and be aware when it begins its upward movement. Then when the journey is over it comes out and once again there is no breath inside. Instead it is outside. Each one of this is a technique that is introduced by Shiva in one of the oldest treaties on Tantra known as Vijnan Bhara Tantra. It is the path of meditation. How to conserve your energy, how to transform it from basal to precious, when you look at coal and diamond, both are compounds of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. When coal remains pressed under earth for a very long period of time, it is transformed into a diamond. In the process of meditation, three things have to be watched. 
the first is the body and its actions walking watching sitting lying down do watch it when you do anything a small or big insignificant or significant you have to watch it and as you watch you will be able to understand i am the watcher on the hill and body is the watched it is separate from you you are separate from your emotions the second step then there is a deeper watchfulness first you are watching the body now you are watching the mind its activities thoughts desires memories and dreams if you have succeeded in the first you are bound to succeed in the second too and then suddenly you will become aware i am not the mind either first i am not the body i am not the mind the second step leads to the third and with this the subtlest watching begins what your feelings sentiments emotions and moods these are very vague and subtle watch your heart once you have become able to watch all three you transcend them and then you become aware of the four you through the and this is what is the fourth way of guruji through his dance movements when a person is dancing he becomes unaware of the first becomes unaware of the body he enters into a different realm this is the moment when soul is born in you before that you were only so so like just you who you do not intensely living you are not passionately alive or totally alive to live in totality is meditation is the essence of meditation